Hi there. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us for today's webinar. We're going to discuss how greenhouse growers can maximize efficiency in their greenhouses and ditch all those multiple spreadsheets and disconnected systems and uh, streamline to scale. So my name is Rain Carpenter and I'm on the marketing team here at Velocio. I just wanted to hop on and let you know that you are all currently muted and today's session is being recorded, which will be sent to you at the end of day today. Um, with you being recorded, we would love to answer questions. So please submit those as we go along and we're gonna save some time for Q&A at the end. And if we don't get to your question, um, we will follow up with you as well. But with that, I will hand it over to our two presenters, pre-sales solution architect, Todd Waterman and account executive, Melissa Herbst. Greetings. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. So I am the industry account executive here at Velocio. I've been here for about 11 years and have had the pleasure of working um, exclusively with growers for the past five to six years. Um, so also get to work very closely with Todd here. So Todd, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Todd Waterman. I spent probably about 18 years in the industry at a liner producer out here in California. So I feel your pain. Um, and uh, Currently, I'm a pre-sales solution engineer, really a fancy way to say that I do meetings with growers and that and do the demonstrations for you all, which I'm going to happy to do today. Awesome. Thanks, Todd. Go ahead and let's move to the next right. slide. So we'll tell you what we've got in store for today. So ultimately, um, what we wanted to talk about, you know, when we talk to growers, we see a lot of Excel, we see a lot of companies operating in um, multiple systems. And so we're going to start our conversation today discussing the perils of disparate systems. Um, we'll have some stories that we're going to share based on what we've seen. And then we're actually going to talk to you about how you can operate better, get better access to information, um, show you some tools and how we can start bringing inventory and sales together, show you tools around production and purchase planning, um, and really show kind of help paint a picture of how you can operate in a more streamlined fashion when you have an end-to-end -end business solution. So that's our plan for today. Hopefully this sounds agreeable to everyone. And I think we can go ahead and get started. All right, so the perils of disparate systems. I love this statement. We see it all over the place, both within the industry and, and frankly, outside of the industry. Um, and so, you know, what happens when we're operating in different systems, and I may have some background noise, so hopefully it's not too loud. Um, but number one, we wanted to talk about some operational inefficiencies. When we have Say sales in one spreadsheet or one area, when we have inventory or what's actually growing in another, you know, we've seen some pretty incredible um, acts of heroism, especially in this area. I think of one, um, one group who everyone every day, especially during spring, you had the sales team who printed out what all their orders were and they had meetings multiple times a day because the inventory team had their spreadsheets for what was actually available and growing and those two teams would meet and it reminded me of like a stock uh, wall street trade floor everyone's like i need you know i need 10 hydrangeas i don't have 10 hydrangeas but i can give you five mountain laurel will your customer take it and so you know when we're operating in different systems we can see a lot of inefficiencies yeah, I agree. I have so many memories from 18 years in that, um, you know, we started uh, doing our freight planning on butcher paper, taped to the wall and pencil with a big, huge eraser. Um, we had, you know, three different spreadsheets, depending on what the program was, you know, as far as the inventory, but we were in QuickBooks, putting the orders in. I'm sure all of you can relate to that. And really, what you really need to think about is, what does all that inefficiency and, and time cost, right? Um, so I think um, <clears throat> those inefficiencies really lead to lost dollars and can lead to lost sales, actually, which we lost certain customers because it took us so long to get back to them. Mm -hmm. Can we really sell this? We print up the order and highlight in yellow, you know, and go put it in a box outside the grower's office and wait for them sometime that day hopefully to come back and mark really what was available and you know that really really 
it can cost you big time. That's stressful. So I think you know the other the other things we see certainly like inaccurate data, um, data that changes. You know I think recently where we've got um, someone working in an older system, and maybe only a few people know how to update that system. And I've seen inventory falling on the responsibility of one individual. And man, watch out in busy season. So everyone's dropping like paper in his or her inbox every day, and that individual is updating this older system because that individual is the only one who knows how to do it and it gets behind. So then, you know, what do we really have to sell? You know, what really is still available? And, you yeah. know, when it gets busy, it's tough. And can that person have a sick day or a vacation? <laughs> it's very tough. You know, in the, in the, I had a similar position. I was a, it, you know, ran IT as well as operations. And, you know, so I was the only one that knew so many things that, uh, I could never take a vacation. <laughs> that That is no fun. Uh, we certainly see a lot of sales and inventory disconnects. Uh, we have been having a lot of conversations. It seems like everyone's talking about straight training new staff, bringing in newer, younger employees. You know, one story that jumps to mind is somebody had a new employee and the guy sold all their hydrangeas. He was like, well, it was sitting there. I could see the plant. What do you mean I couldn't sell it? Well, it would, you know, this old system had already claimed it for another sale, but that new person didn't know that. So he, he sold the inventory out from under them. <laughs> that That is so true, though. That's the thing is why it's hard to look at someone and say, I know that has a number, but don't trust that. Right. Or that's not real. So you're really training them day one to not trust your numbers. Yeah. And so we see a lot of clients who are trying to bring in younger, newer employees to the industry and, you know, tribal knowledge is tough to train new people. And we're trying to get new blood in and um, this new generation is used to working with technology. And so that is driving a lot of clients to make a change. Um, department silos, you know, we, we, we see that. I love one story where, you know, one client had said, well, we decided to sell more poinsettias, but nobody told purchasing. So we went to stick, you know, we didn't have the materials. Right. So Different spreadsheet. Every silos. department has their own spreadsheets and their own things and they all guard them. Like they have who killed Kennedy in there. And, but again, just like if you don't have access to that or that person's not there, I mean, it can really stop business. Yeah, yeah. So we see a lot in our conversations and certainly want to help um, all of our, our clients that we speak with to how do we operate better. Um, and so I think what we plan to do today is show you some, some things where how having, you know, even just master data captured in one system so people have visibility to it can really drive some efficiencies in the system. And so um, I think this, this concludes our storytelling for the moment. Yeah, Is right. This is story time's over. <laughs> All right. I'm going to flip my camera off here just so you guys don't see okay. my face on the screen while I'm sharing here. Okay. So access to information. You know, I think that's, that's kind of the moral of the story is really what you can do with access to information. You know, when your information is spread out all over the place. You know, I, I know you guys can all relate to this. I mean, sometimes it's so much blood, sweat, and tears to even really put in an order. So what I'm going to do is show you some live demo examples. The last few webinars, we've kind of stuck with PowerPoint. So we're going to really get out and let you really see the um, me playing around on the system live. So what I'm going to do is just in the spirit of access to information, just look at even an item master, meaning, you know, one of the items that you sell, and really all the information, everything that really you have in one place on that item card. So we're gonna check that out. You know, I'm gonna go over a little bit of sales orders, you know, and that disconnect between sales and inventory, because usually the inventory is in a spreadsheet, the sales are in QuickBooks or something. So, you know, you count the inventory every week, right? You know, we used to do that. I mean, how much time and money is that? Just cause we couldn't counter, you know, we couldn't trust the numbers. Uh, they updated the spreadsheet of the inventory maybe once or twice a week, but so it's it's uh, wrong in 10 minutes. You know, as soon as one order goes in, nothing's deducting from the spreadsheet. So there's a constant disconnect between sales and inventory. And also, I'm going to talk about working with the cell. I love the part of the title of this webinar of ditching the spreadsheets. 
I mean, I, I have seen the most incredible spreadsheet concoctions of purchasing engines and stuff. Uh, we had one customer that really was a physicist, actually, and it was the most impressive spreadsheet that I've ever seen. But if something went wrong in a cell or something, it took her a week to figure it out. You know, um, so it was very impressive, but you get to a point where Excel is not meant to be a database. Mm. But so what I'm going to show you is we can still, you know, uh, this is a Microsoft system, Business Central, along with Silverleaf. Um, and <clears throat> you can still use Excel a lot. So I'm going to show you some examples of that. So it's not like you're not going to use Excel, but you can use it in conjunction with the system. And also we're gonna look at production and purchase planning, one tool to rule them all. So there's a planning worksheet that really um, handles planning production and purchasing all at the same time if you want to. I wanna show you a little bit of that. So these are three areas um, of the system that I think you can really see the advantage of having everything in one system. So with that, I'm gonna escape out of here and minimize this. Okay. Ooh. Nice. So this is this is my item list. Um, I am a sucker for hydrangeas. I, I show these most of the time. I, it's <laughs> probably my favorite, and hydrangea limelight is probably my favorite um, plant. I have several of these in my yard. Anyway, so um, just a little bit about what you're looking here. I know those of you who haven't seen the system yet. We're just jumping right into the item list. So you know, I'm I'm really trying to. Uh, tempt your curiosity so um you know i can't really go over everything but we're going to start right here and i'm going to go ahead and go into this limelight so this is what we call <clears throat> the item card it's going to come up my laptop's a little slow there we go okay so you can see from the top this is hydrangea limelight two gallon and so really what i want want you to notice here is how much information about the item is in here. Really, it's almost everything about this item, including how to grow it, or if you purchase it, when to purchase it, all different things like that, all on this one page. So starting over here at the right, of course, we got a picture, right? We have item attributes. So I can see the color is white and the hardiness zone is <coughs> zones three to eight. Light, mature size, you know, we, you make all those up yourself, right? So you can put anything in there. These are ones that I created, but you can put any, there's no limit to how many attributes you have. And so all of the item lists and availability and all that can be filtered by these um, attributes. So I could be in availability and say, you know, what do we have that's red? Or what do we have that's in zone three to eight? Or what, um, you know, what plants take full sun to part shade, things like that. So these can be really, really powerful. The beauty is you can make them whatever you want. So there's information right there, right? Look at, I have attachments here. And this is these are really called fact boxes on the right. So you're gonna see that all over the system. I'll call them out as I go along, but it's, it's really just access to information about whatever page you're on. So I even have attachments here. So I have one attachment, and I'll show you how to drag attachments in here shortly in a sales order, but I have an attachment in here of a PDF of Hydrangea Limelight Professional Grower Sheet. You know, you can have unlimited attachments here. So this is things that, you know, pertain to this plant or this item that, you know, these documents and that aren't all over the place in different employees, you know, document folder and things like that. So the way to bring it all together so there's one place, one version of the truth. That's really the big thing is, Right now, so many companies have several versions of the truth, right? I also can put links in here. So I can click one click and get actually to Spring Meadows page to get all the <clears throat> different cultural information and all of that if you want. And also notes. I don't have any notes in here, but there's unlimited notes, maybe different things you want to put in here that customer service or different people can have access to. You know, not everybody that, you know, most customer service employees come in, you know, to, to do that job and they're not plant experts, you know, so as much details and different information that we have in the item, then they can really on their own, you know, learn a lot of this stuff and access it without having to try to hunt it down from somebody else. Um, we have a category code here of shrubs. This is the really good stuff right here. Look under this inventory tab. By the way, these are called fast tabs. You know, you can open and close them. So it really allows you to have endless information on a page, but look at all this that we have. I, I can see my quantity on hand. So I have 9,756 of these. 
Now, one thing to remember about on hand is that doesn't mean there's nine, seven, five, six available to sell. That's really what's, you know, what actually we have on hand. So this isn't, you don't really look at that for sales availability. This is just saying physically what's, what's on hand at the moment. I can drill into any of these numbers and actually see what's behind it. Allegedly, there it is. Okay, so you can see even starting from the bottom here, you can see every transaction that's happened with this plant, and this is forever. So you can see uh, positive adjustments. That's me just shoving availability in, you know, just with a journal. But you can see here we sold some of it. So that was the minus 200. Then we sold another 200. Now we output, right? That was from a production order. I output 100 of them that I grew. Then we consumed it or something else. So you get the idea. So really this all over the system, wherever you see a number, you click into it and there's gonna be a whole ledger behind it that really tells you what makes that up. So that's quantity on hand. Look at it also, how many are in purchase order? Maybe, you know, I buy in some of this and I grow it. So I can see I have 600 on a purchase order. It's for ball seed, right? I can click on show document and it's gonna drill right to the actual uh, ball seed purchase order. If I wanna look at it. But you can see I've never left the, really left the item there, right? How many are on, in production right now? I have 1,200 on a production order. So you can see it's only one. But again, I can drill right to the production order. I always like to say it's almost like you can get everywhere from anywhere inside of Business Central because of this drill down functionality. And I also can see how many quantity on sales orders. There's 435. What if we had an issue with this, right? I can remember uh, writing reports for sales on that where they come in all frantic because we had a crop failure or something. And, you know, we have orders a year in advance. And they're like, we need to find all the orders that Hydrangea Limelight's on because we have to sub it, something like that. There's lots of ways to find that information, but look right here on the item card, you have that. Really, really nice. When I click into it, you can see here, these are different order numbers here. But it's really only showing not that limelight's the only thing on the order, but it's only showing that line because you you know we're looking at this item. But again, one click away, you can click there and get to these sales orders and that access to information. I'm not going to go through all of these other tabs and that, but just for reference, you know you have everything from costing. You can see I'm FIFO here, gives me my unit cost, what my net invoice quantity was. You know once you set this, all of this is happening you know, as we purchase, as we grow and things like that. So it's going to continually be calculating that cost. Replenishment, see everything on one page. I This is a production order is my replenishment system. So that means I grow this, you know, it could be something I purchase, could be an assembly, you know, like uh, you have a fancy pot and a fancy tag and that, that you assemble at the end before shipping, you know, as assembly order, for example. So just the point I'm trying to get is that, you know, you have one place to go to access this information. I used to use a system when there was probably nine different places I had to go to actually set up an item and to link everything together. And it just it's just not like that in this system, which is just so positive. Yeah. And then I have planning, which, you know, you're going to see me plan some stuff in a while. But this is where you can really specify, you know, how you how often you bring this into inventory. You know, I'm saying. Um, six days which really equals a week is how often i or when i plan i want production orders or purchases to only always fall in weeks you know i could or it could be something you order every month it could be uh you know pots that you order once a year so but this is all this planning stuff goes around so when we run the planning engine it knows um those different parameters all right and just one last thing here in here's sales prices so I, you know, in my past, you know, it was such an issue. We had so many different spreadsheets of costing. We had our Home Depot cost sheet. We had our independent garden center cost sheet. We had our, you know, kind of list price, walk-in price lists. And, you know, none of that was really in the system. So, because we only had um, space for one price. Wow. Uh, didn't really have volume discounts in that. So we can go right here to sales prices and look at, I only have one. All of this can be brought in from Excel, but you can see this is a price list for all customers, more like a list price, but I could have it by a, a list for a specific customer. Maybe it's Home Depot or Lowe's or something. I can have different price discount groups 
and all of that. So you could really do your prices all in one and have the minimum quantities, you know, and volume discounts and all that, or you can have separate spreadsheets, you can copy them. So the beauty is this is my price spreadsheet, but it's inside the system. So I don't have to go out and find it elsewhere. All right, so that's a little bit about the item master. Let's go on to something a little bit more exciting. I love it. Even though that's so basic, I mean, it just, you know, item master data, but it's so foundational and to access all of that information in one area. Yeah, and that's what I, you know, I, I'm really big into to, uh, lean manufacturing in that. And they talk about two second improvements, you know, if you take all of your process in that and try to just even two second improvements, you know, all of that adds up to time. And I think if you really think about how much time it takes us to figure out what we have and, you know, maybe, you know, putting in orders and, and all that takes so much time, you got to think about that of the ROI of buying a new system. If you really add up all of that wasted time and effort, there's really a lot of money involved. Okay, so here's my, this is my list of sales orders, okay? Look at, we got other fa fact boxes, like I mentioned before, this one is actually, as I click on these different orders, they're gonna, fact boxes will change, but this is our, you know, I can see how many racks are on this order. It's already assigned to a load, things like that. Here's the load details. I can see all the customer statistics, you know, and all this stuff's a click away to see that's their balance. We can see, oh, they're red. So that means those two invoices are overdue. Access to information. All right, let's create a sales order. All right, I'm gonna do Moon Valley Nursery. So I'm just gonna type Moon and should figure it out. All right. Oh, and it's reminding me this customer has an overdue balance. I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of that for right now. I'm gonna choose a salesperson. And all of this stuff, the Southwest Territory and the, these things, and Jennifer Hudson is the contact, all of that comes from the customer card, so it's automatically filling that in. And again, here we got fact boxes. Look at this one has to do with this sell to customer history. So think about if you're in the sales order, you're with, <clears throat> you're on the phone with a client, right here you know you can just click on ongoing sales orders and it's going to take you to their six ongoing sales orders you know you can you can see posted sales shipments you know ongoing credit memos any of this stuff and then we have you'll see when we go into the sales line this is all information about the sales line okay so first let's go ahead and put in an item different ways that you can do it so what's really neat is that uh, I used to really depend on our numbering you know we, we uh, mm -hmm. had three digit nine different uh, alphanumeric codes and all three each three digits meant something different so we really had to kind of memorize the the um, item numbers in this I have this um, auto numbering because I, in this field I could put the number in or I can type text as well and you can see it went right to the hydrangeas just by typing HYD I'm gonna throw the hydrangea in there, okay? And so look at, if I scroll down here, you can see already the item availability here is negative 25. That's a problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and look, I'm gonna hit Alt F11, and it's gonna pull up our availability matrix, just for this one item. But this is a way that I can look out and see, okay, we know there's negative 25 now, so I'm obviously not gonna be able to ship it for a few weeks. But this is showing the advantage of, you know, production is inside the same system. So as they're making adjustments, start growing, doing uh, dumps, you know, any of that stuff, as long, you know, it's garbage in, garbage out. If they're not updating the system, it's not gonna work, right? But as long as they're updating the system with what they're doing outside, sales can just book. And, you know, so here's the hydrangea limelight. I can see I'm at negative 25 here. I can even click in here and see what it is. Oh, there's one sales order that's 25 and there is no inventory. I can actually click into that to see the sales order or sales orders, you know, and jump to them if I needed to. But we can see right here on week 21, there's more coming in. So what is that? All right, so we got a production order for 1200 that's growing right now. And we can see that there's, 25 already being subtracted from it. 
But if I click on the 1200 here, I can see there's a production order out there. Uh, due date is 524.23, and it's being grown at the east location. And so I can click into this. So I, me, as a customer service person, I can get all the way to the production order and see what's going on. I can look at what they've posted already. I can even see they have a note in here. Crop looks good, might be ready a week or two early. That's some good information. But all of this, and you haven't left the sales order. Really, you're all still there. So how efficient is that? All right, so now I'm going to, that would just change my shipment date to, let's say, I'm just gonna say week 27. And it's gonna update the line for that. So now I moved it to 7.5. Now you can see I have availability 11.75 here. All right, so I'm gonna buy 50 of them. Already, you know, it's subtracted that 50 over here. So the, you know, the inventory is live. That that means if somebody else is is in a sales order, it's going to change for them too. It's not like as I put these lines in until I save the whole order, the availability isn't taken. This is as you put these lines in. Okay. All right. So what other ways can we put in orders? How about this? So we love Excel, right? Microsoft loves Excel. So they really are making the system to be fully integrated with Microsoft Office because really who doesn't use Microsoft Office? But if you notice this, this is actually what I did here is I have these, just this pertinent information about the item, you know, the variant code, this is actually uh, stages like bud only, crackling color, full bloom, you know, because we grade this product. I got the quantity, the unit of measure, what location it's coming from, the east, and what ship date I want. So a customer emailed this to me, and this is what they want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy all this. I'm gonna go back in the system, and I'm gonna paste this in here. So this could be coming from a client. You know, we have clients out there that send out their availability in a spreadsheet once a week. And there is a column where the customer can actually put in the quantity they want. So look at, I just pasted all those lines in. I wonder how long it would take you to put that in. I've shown this in a demo before and three people got up and walked out of the room because they were so frustrated of how long it takes them to put in an order that they actually could do something like this. So that's the beauty. We love Excel, Excel's so easy and everything, but we still can use it and still have everything in one system. All right, now, one last thing I wanna show you in here. So now they have all these things, we do have, uh, like advanced packaging. So really the package could be anything, but in, in my case, I'm doing shipment racking because we ship on racks. So I can just click right in here. This is something else that I see all the time that's done in a spreadsheet where you have to export the information from whatever system you're in to put it into something else to really create the racks or figure that out. You know, Silverleaf has all that already. So now I got in here, it has the sales order. All I gotta do is say generate racks. Because in the setup, I have the, the rack dimension set up. I have how many fit on a on a layer per plant, you know, per variety, and also the heights at finish. And that's so it really it's optimizing these racks to fit as much as possible. So I'm going to say yes. And that quick, it created the racks. So here what we have is six racks here on the top. I'm using CC racks. It's on my east location, the rack height is 100. So look at, I can already see here, height used, I'm using 92 inches of the 100. <clears throat> so all of these are full, but look at my bottom one is only 36. So there's 60 inches of height remaining. So that's the, the several shelves, right? I only got two shelves on this one, five on the rest of them. So I can update that right here. I can lock this and change it. Um, without going back to the order and redoing it. But look at, as I click on these carts, you can see the detail on the bottom of the layers. Here's the five layers. Look at, we even know what slot to put the shelves in. Slot one, slot 25, slot 49. So, you know, we can run reports from all of this information to have a rack building report. You know, these are the racks we've got to build for tomorrow and it even gives them the slots and the shelf heights and all that. And telling you what's on each layer here, okay? So that's a little bit about the racking, pretty slick. All right, let me jump out of the order here. One last thing uh, that has to do with sales orders is think about substitutions. Um, that's one of the biggest headaches, right? We 
wish we didn't have live product sometimes, you know, because it doesn't spoil or get viruses or, you know, all the different things that happen. <clears throat> so, but what we can do here is I can actually select all of the sales orders. Now I could have filtered this down to different locations, different customers, or, you know, depending, I'm just selecting them all. I don't have that many orders in here, but you see, I can go up here and go to this multi order management. And this is the lines, the sales lines of all the orders, all in one place. So I can go to town and edit whatever I want in math. Um, so for instance, um, I have, um, oh, my mouse is freaking out here. There we go. I have the super bells, holy cow. Maybe I have to sub that with something different. So I can actually just say, you know what, we're gonna sub it with Evening Star. I could easily just go down here real quick and kind of do this myself, right? This isn't that many, I can quickly go down and update, but it's already updated these orders with the sub. Get rid of this. But let's say there's a massive list, you know, maybe there's a whole year of orders or something, you have to sub something. Then we use Excel, see? So I can go edit in Excel, and just for time purposes, I'm not gonna do that right now, but you can, Click edit in Excel, it will open up Excel and pull all this information into it. You can use your autofill, go nuts, do whatever you want as far as updating, press publish and it can write it back all to here. So really you end up having the best of both worlds. You have all of this data, everything in one place, but you can still use all these tools that you love. All right, so that's a little bit about mass order management. All right, moving along. Last thing I'm going to do is production and purchase planning, one tool to rule them all. So we call that the planning worksheet. So what's really special about this, it doesn't look like much. It really just looks like a spreadsheet, but this is a planning engine. So what this is going to do is it can look at forecasts that you've created of, you know, um, demand forecasts of what you want to grow, right? So you could have your whole plan, you know, different, I'm not going to show demand forecasts right now, just think of them as spreadsheets in the system of different forecasts, whether you want to put all of everything in one, or you want to split them up by program or not, but you, you really run this engine against those, right? So it looks at your forecast, and then it's going to really suggest what you should grow when, what you should purchase, you know, what you should transfer. And so there's really this one tool does all of that, okay? So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just say, I'm going to calculate my plan here. I don't know why my mouse keeps freaking out. Okay. Okay. So this does MPS and MRP. Really, that's an acronym. Basically, what this means is these are production orders, MPS. So something you're going to grow. MRP is uh, purchases in that for, you know, the inputs. So I could just do production if I wanted to just turn that off. I'm going to leave it on to do both production and purchasing all at the same time. But you could have a different purchaser or something to where you know that you don't care about that and just the production team wants to use this just production, you can do that. I'm gonna be looking at all of this year is the range when I run this. And look at, here's use forecast. So I have a lot of them in here. There's a finish 23, liners 23. I made one just for today that I call demo. And I'm also just, planning for the main location. You know, I have multiple locations, multiple farms, so I'm specifying which one I'm planning for. Okay? And then I just run it. So I only have one item in the demand forecast, so it's going to be really quick. And I didn't want to flood this with so much information. But just this one example is we're growing a petunia easy wave yellow forage, okay? And I put that we wanted to grow 10,000. That's the only thing that was in the demand forecast. So what this is doing is this is an actual production order. It's suggesting for 10,000, okay? But look at here, I got it also created at the same time my plug order because I need to grow a seed plug to put in this easy wave. So you can see here the starting time. I got to start this on 426. It'll be done 522 and then ready on 522 and ending 7.3 for the actual finished product. So I didn't have to run this and then go run this to figure out, you know, liners or plugs or anything. You know, it does that all at the same time, which I think is pretty amazing. 
I also have a 2% scrap, so you can see on these inputs, it's saying to grow 10,200, so I have enough extra to really for sure make 10,000. And I need tags. You know, one thing to, to make sure you understand too is if I already had tags, if I already had inventory of, of these things, it wouldn't suggest anything. So it's not just gonna look at your forecast and, and do that. It's going to look at the forecast plus look at every other form of supply and demand in the system to really come up with the suggestion. That's why it says action message new, you know, a new production order. You could run this again and it might say you should change the quantity or cancel or something because as the system, the data in the system changes. And we got our pots, four inch black pot. We need a 288 cell tray also for the uh, plug and we need seed. Right, so you saw I clicked the button one time, and it went through everything and has all of that. Now, when you're growing, you know, huge amounts of information on the demand forecast, this can get pretty busy. But it's just like a spreadsheet, how you can filter for different items and that, and um, really make it manageable. All right, speaking of access to information, even from here we can access information about all of these products. I'm just going to highlight the first line here in the Petunia Easy Wave, and I could go here and look at what. What are the components of this? We really can see that on the screen now, but this is really the bill of materials. What makes up an easy wave yellow four inches? First, a plug. You need one of those plug petunia, and that's why it automatically creates the plug job is because the finished product has this plug as an input. We need a four and a half inch black pot, and we need the one tag. Also the routing, which is like the, the grow times in that. Look, we have several steps here. We're gonna transplant it, 28 days. Then we're gonna space it, grow it for another 14. I also have a line in here to post all the overhead labor and then just the last step of finish would actually outputs it to inventory. But so I can see all the setup from inside here. I could also look at the availability. Maybe we wanna see like what, <clears throat> what Petunia Easy Wave Yellow we have at other locations. These are all my different farms. Really have none, you can see I have 10 here quantity on hand at this east location. So obviously I need to grow a lot more. I can even see it by bill of materials level availability. So I can see uh, this is everything that builds up this product. And obviously I have no availability, but in this column right here, it would show you what you have on hand currently. Moral of the story is look at in this one page, all of this stuff is going on and you have access to all this other information in here without going anywhere. I can update any of these numbers in here. If I wanna change it, I can change any of the dates so you don't have to do what it's saying here. But if everything's good, we're going to, <coughs> pardon me, go ahead and say, carry out action message. And what that's gonna do, it's saying, if it's a, a production order, <clears throat> pardon me, I gotta get a drink of water real quick. I'm telling it I want you to make it a firm planned production order, which means it's there. It's going to create the availability, but you got to release it to where once you really are going to start the production. If there was assembly orders, I'm saying make them. Purchase orders, I'm saying to make them, but look, you have other choices in here. Uh, maybe you want to just copy it to the requisition worksheet for, for another purchaser to really handle. But I'm going to say go ahead and create the purchase orders for me. And we don't have any transfer orders. Uh, but it would it this does that too, and that really is if you have your inventory at separate locations and you need to transfer, you know it's not a sale between the your locations. It's just transferring inventory, and that's what a transfer order is. But I'm going to go ahead and just say okay. So what it's going to do? It's going to create the production order and all the purchase orders for me. Come on, there we go. All right. I had a wrong posting group inside of this, so it wouldn't do it, my bad. But you get the idea. <clears throat> so that was my little tour. Uh, you know, hopefully you enjoyed that. I <clears throat> was trying to really give you a taste of the different ways that having everything in one system can help you. And also with, especially with this system, because of all the different Excel integrations. You know, you saw me paste into an order, right? You can do that in, in ledgers. You can do that in accounting. We have customers that, you know, maybe you're in, in charge of pots and they'll have a spreadsheet with all their pot items and they quickly go down and say how many they want to order and paste that into a purchase order. 
You saw the edit in Excel. You know, it's also integrated with Teams. If you use Teams, it's integrated with Word, all of that stuff. So really, really good stuff. And that's all I got. Thank you so much, Todd and Melissa, for all of the insightful information you shared with our attendees today. I do have a couple questions that have come through. Uh, we have to wrap things up today right around 1245. So I'm going to jump right in. Uh, Phil asked, what are your thoughts on risk with upgrading to a digital solution from a security standpoint? Melissa or Todd, do you want to take that on? Yeah, I can take that. <laughs> the security is much, much better um, <clears throat> when you get to the cloud. This this is, system is in the cloud. <clears throat> so that means Microsoft, Microsoft has all the responsibility for the ransomware and the and the viruses and and all of that different stuff they have redundant you know multiple copies of your system and they're backing it up <clears throat> you know i used to back up to a tape and keep tapes in my trunk in case the place burned down and and you know rotate them every week i had to buy new servers i had to install patches all of these things now my team consultant come in to help but honestly the the risk of the security risk is much less in the cloud than if you have your own server, you know, on-premise there. So there really is nothing but gain there. Another one, uh, Janet asked, does the solution have mobile capabilities, say for instance, for an iPad, for example, if I wanted to take the iPad directly out to the greenhouse with me? Why don't you take that one, Melissa? Yeah, I can take that one. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's mobile ready, so. What's great on the Microsoft Foundation is that Microsoft makes sure that it's device agnostic. So you can, on any device, browse into the application. And then depending on specific functions, if we want to optimize for specific mobility devices, we can look at ways to extend the solution to do that. You know, if we're just, say, picking, if we're just receiving inventory, there are devices we can carry the solution to to just do specific functions optimally. Good answer. And we'll do one final one. Um, I think this question's coming, I'll, I'll reword it a bit. Um, we've thrown that Silverleaf logo on a lot of our promotions recently. It's been in our emails. Can one of you give it, the attendees an overview of Silverleaf? And this person was specifically wondering if it was built uh, within the Microsoft solution or is it different systems? And I think they were trying to kind of tie that in with what we talked about today. So if you, if you gotcha. guys could just offer some Yeah, that, that does get a little confusing. I'm, I'm, that's a really good question. I'm glad that uh, somebody asked that. So the the system is Microsoft Business Central. Okay, so that's that's the business system. So that's already out of the box. You know, it's your accounting, sales orders, warehousing, <clears throat> um, purchasing all of that stuff it's a full fledged ERP system and it already has production as far as like manufacturing but where silverleaf comes in is we're adding functionality you know to fill gaps with growers right manufacturing you know is is pretty rigid as far as if you're creating widgets or something you know uh it doesn't die it doesn't get viruses you know it doesn't freeze things like that right so what we've done is massaged it and, and added functionality where needed to enhance it for growers. And so that add-on is Silverleaf. But I hate to even say add-on because it's completely embedded in the system. A good portion of what I showed you was Silverleaf and it's kind of spreckled all, all throughout the system. So you don't know really what's Silverleaf and what's Business Central, it's all embedded together. But essentially what it is is added functionality for growers so you would buy business central and then you also get the silver leaf add-on to really complete it for growers hope that made sense yeah thank you so much todd thank you again to melissa and todd for taking time to put this presentation together and share some other insights with all of you and all of you thank you for taking time to join us today i did throw in the chat that if you have any other questions please submit those to insider at velocio.com and we will follow up with you uh, and keep an eye in your inbox, keep an eye out in your inbox for a link to the recording um, and some other helpful resources uh, and helping you to learn a little bit more about Velocio and Silverleaf. So I am going to end it, but thank you again. Thank we you all. You. Thanks, everyone.